at the end of what must be one of the busiest weeks I've had on YouTube. I thought it might be fun if the final, well, probably the final video of the week that I made was telling you what Mac Mini I've gone for, the configs, the reasons that I've gone for those choices, and also when it's going to be delivered to me. So out of the announcements we've had this week, I think the Mac Mini was the one most of us were keen to find out about. The iMac, of course, just had the M4 chip in it. It sits where it sits in the, in the lineup of Macs, and that's fine. The MacBook Pros, yes, they had some nice iterative developments. They are quick, of course, but basically, again, still the same MacBook Pros that we've had. The Mac Mini was redesigned. It looks different, it's tiny, and everyone's interested to know if it's going to be as good as it looks. And these things could be a real powerhouse, you know, they really could be. So once we knew we were getting a Mac Mini, I began thinking about what I was going to order. Now, originally, I'd intended to retire and replace my 2021 M1 Max, my 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro with four terabytes of storage and 32 gigs of RAM. But then I began looking at that this week as I was editing all these videos and realizing how quick it is. I've turned out a lot of content this week and it doesn't miss a beat. It works really, really well. So it seemed premature to just retire that and bin it off to one side. I thought it was more sense to keep that. But then when I was specking up the Mac Mini to have kind of an eye to the future of in case the MacBook should die at any time, I've got a Mac ready to go. If you've read any of my stuff, if you've watched many of my videos, you know I've got a big thing about future-proofing. It's very easy to save yourself a few pounds, dollars now, but then regret it a little bit later on. So I've done quite a lot of box ticking on the order that I placed today. Now, being so busy making content, I didn't have enough time to sit down and place the order until today. I'm recording this Thursday evening, so a couple of days after the Mac Mini came out. But I've had a good thought, a uh, clear head, and I'm happy with the choices that I've made. Now, one of the things that initially worried me, and don't forget my benchmark, as it were, my comparison tool is going to be my M1 Max. I'm going from an M1 Max to an M4 Pro. But I love chatting with you guys because a lot of you have got more knowledge than me, actually, and it's great to get some feedback. Should I be concerned that I'm going from an M1 Max from three years ago, which was on the 5 nanometer technology, to the M4 Pro, which is a much newer chip, much newer chip, and it should be faster. So I'm thinking, although it's only going, it, we're trading down effectively from a Max to a Pro, those years in between and the way that Apple Silicon has improved, I don't think I'm going to regret those choices too much. The Mac Mini basic spec starts at £1,399. And now I'm going to break through how I began to tick boxes and what I've chosen. So I've gone for the Pro chip, but I've also gone for the higher spec chip. So I've gone for the 14-core CPU and 20-core GPU. That in itself was a £200 upgrade. But considering the kind of work I do, again, I think that's money well spent. Bear in mind, um, I've got an eye in the future to this becoming my main rig alongside the studio display. It would save me a lot of space on the desk. I'd have that one tiny box sitting underneath the studio display, and I can't tell you what that does for my neat freak in me. It would look absolutely gorgeous. If we look back at my 2021, M1 Max MacBook Pro, that had a 10-core CPU and a 32-core GPU. So I'll be interested to know if those lack of GPU cores are going to come back to bite me or not. I tend to think not. The memory bandwidth is slightly down as well. My MacBook had a 400 gigabits per second memory bandwidth. The Mac Mini I'm about to buy has only got a 273 gigabits per second memory bandwidth. But again, I, I never really push it. The hardest work I ever do on my Macs is editing 4K video, ProRes log video sometimes. That's the hardest thing I do. Now, I'll be doing some export tests from Final Cut over the next couple of weeks to see how they compare. But generally speaking, on my M1 Max, I can export a 10-minute, say, 4K video in around about four minutes. It's, it's quick. It really is quick. When I bought that machine, it was very much with an eye to video editing. So it'll be interesting to see how that compares. So next, we come down to the memory as standard. The Mac Mini Pro comes with 24 gigs standard memory. I wanted to increase that, so I've ticked the box with 48 gigs of memory. So again, I've upgraded for my M1 Max. That's got 32. I've gone up to 48 gigs of memory, and that was an extra 400 pounds. I could have gone up to 64, but I decided I didn't need it. Again, I have never come anywhere near to pushing these things. I've never beach balled my M1 Max, and I'm expecting good things from this M1 this Mac Mini that I've just bought, this M4 Mac Mini that I've just bought. Then it was onto storage. Now, when I got my MacBook Pro, I had a great deal of trouble in actually finding the machine I wanted. I ended up buying a machine with four terabytes of storage on, whereas I only wanted two. I've got very used to that headroom, very used to that headroom, never having to worry 
about memory. But don't forget, in essence, the MacBook Pro is a portable laptop. I don't care how much, it's too big, it's too heavy, but at its core, at its essence, it is a laptop. So internal storage always counts me. The Mac Mini is a different beast. Of course, that is gonna be a desktop Mac. I can actually use external storage, which is so cheap. Now, I've made some notes here. If I'd got, the, the, first of all, jumping up from 512 gigs of storage up to one terabyte cost me another 200 pounds. But if I'd gone up from one terabyte to two terabytes with Apple, that would have cost me 400 pounds. So 400 pounds of one terabyte. Now, one of the most exciting things about these new Mac minis and the, the, the higher-end MacBook Pros is, of course, you've got Thunderbolt 5 ports with tremendous transfer speeds up to 120 gigabits per second. Now, the peripherals market is going to have to catch up and quick. It was odd. We heard no mention before these announcements. Nobody had forecast news, as far as I've read, that we were getting Thunderbolt 5 ports. But with those tremendous transfer speeds, external SSDs using those new Thunderbolt 5 ports and the speeds they've got, sounds like a great get out of jail code for me. Now, there's not a great deal of choice out there just at the moment, but I found an OWC two terabyte external drive, a five terabyte drive for 350 pounds. So that's roughly half the price. Don't forget, Apple has charged me two, uh, 400 pounds for one terabyte, and I've, I could go and buy two terabytes for 350 pounds. So I could take the spec of my Mac Mini up from one terabyte to three terabytes for only 350 pounds. And the great thing is I can spread the cost out. Like all of us, it, you know, none of this stuff gets given to me. I'm buying all of this with my own money. So that's probably a good time for me to say, if you are enjoying this content and watching me bring Apple News to you every week, please, that subscription. You can see I'm putting myself out there for you. You know I answer all of your comments. We've got a great community, great community here. And I think we're different to many others. I really do think there's a lovely atmosphere between us. We talk during the week and we learn from one another. So if you enjoy this content and you want to see what my Mac Mini is like in a few weeks time, subscribing, turning on notifications and sharing really would help me out. So I'm going to go with external drive in time, but I've ordered it right now with just one terabyte of storage on. Now when I look at my MacBook Pro, I've only used just over one terabyte of storage in three years. So clearly that four terabytes gave me a lot of headroom. So yes, one terabyte probably isn't quite enough. And during the week when I'm working on these videos for you, I always keep that folder, that file locally on the desktop. So that will eat up a fair bit of space. But again, it's never going to be anything approaching. I mean, file and cut files get big, but only sort of 80, 90, maybe 120 gigs worth, which then as soon as I finish the project, it's archived and off, taken off the, the desktop anyway. So I only need that little bit of headroom and having that external driving time will be fine. But don't forget to start with this Mac Mini isn't going to be working hard. And then the last option was the Ethernet. I've left it at a gigabit Ethernet. I don't need to network it. That'll be absolutely fine for me. So today, the Mac Mini that I have specced up and chosen has cost me £2,199. It's got the uprated chip with 14 cores of CPU and a 20 core GPU. And I've also put in the extra memory, gone up to 48 gigs. I've gone up to one terabyte of storage and that's cost me £2,199. Now, although Apple said that these Mac minis are gonna to begin to drop on Friday the 8th of November, because it's a customer spec machine, at the moment, I'm being quoted two to three weeks. That could improve, but at the moment, I could be having to wait for two to three weeks. But unlike, say, with the iPhone, where it's really important to have it on release day, I've, I'm buying this machine for my use as well as just reviewing it for the channel. So I needed to make sure the specs were right for me further down the line. I, I really got a big thing about future-proofing. Although I could have gone a little bit higher spec on the memory and on the storage, I don't think I'm going to need to. My the thing I'm going to be most interested to see is how in theory, an M4 Pro chip, which isn't as good as an M1 Max chip from a few years ago, how that compares in real working situations, the work I do here for you, producing the podcast, producing these videos. And that's what you'll find for me in a couple of weeks' time. The other things I bought, by the way, are now finally, I think, here in the studio, got rid of the lightning cable. I bought myself in black a new full numeric keyboard, trackpad, and mouse. They're available the next day, but I haven't bothered to tick the boxes and get delivered yet. There's no point until the Mac Mini arrives. So that's what I've done. I've gone and spent £2,199 today, and I'm expecting great things from it. Now, we've had a lot of chat this week. I hope you explained away why I've chosen what I've chosen, but I'd love to know what have you chosen. That's what this channel is all about. Let me know if you bought a Mac Mini, what specs have you gone with? Do you think I've made the right choices? And what are you going to be using your Mac Mini for? Make sure to let me know. I can't wait to get my hands in it. Final Cut Pro 
it's if you're a Final Cut Pro user and expert, let me know how do I save and export a version of Final Cut from my M1 Max MacBook Pro and take it over to the Mac Mini. I've begun looking into it. it. I'm not sure if it's straightforward or not. I'm sure I'll get my head around it in the end. My team at Apple were also trying to hook me up with a Final Cut specialist so I can go into London, take the MacBook Pro with me and the Mac Mini. Because of course, don't forget, it technically the Mac Mini is portable. As long as you've got a display at the other end, you can put a Mac Mini, a keyboard and a mouse in your backpack and you've got a mobile computer. I love the idea of this Mac Mini. The more I think about it, the more I love the idea of it. I really do. Earlier this year, I made a video talking about how much harder it is making choices between MacBooks and iPads now to work on. And that's a video on screen. I'll catch you next week.